Hello, I'm Skid from the Widescreen Gaming Forum. Today I'm going to be giving you a look at Need for Speed Rivals. Now, Need for Speed Rivals is probably best described as a spiritual successor to Hot Pursuit 2010, uh, with a lot of the elements from me Need for Speed Most Wanted uh, mixed into it. Um, but first things first, we'll start where we always do, and that's with multi-monitor support. Now, this is running the Frostbite 3 engine, so one would assume it has good support, and it does detect the resolution. It is correctly scaling the um, UI to fit my centre monitor, which is a 16x10, so it's not bleeding over because it's fixed to 16x9. It's specifically detected that I'm running triple 16x10s. Um, and all that would be good if the developer wasn't entirely incompetent. So let me just find a place to start. Is that a medium intercept? It is, so we'll start here and we'll let it load. But basically the fundamental problem is that the game in chase cam is vertical minus. In um, nose cam it's absolutely fine. Now all indications I've seen from games made in Frostbite 3, so Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, Need for Speed The Run was Frostbite 3 as well, um, all of those games were native vertical or native horizontal plus across the board. Um, I didn't have to uh, do anything to fix the field of view on that. Unfortunately, for some reason, the developer thought it would be the best thing to do, if it will hurry up and move into the car, to make it vertical minus and look like that. Now, they've specifically done this, because as I said, if you go into that view, then that's absolutely fine. But if you go to external view, it's vertical minus. Fortunately, the good people at the widescreen gaming forum, specifically Vulcan S. There goes a the car. Vulcan S um, actually gave Hayden a copy of this game, and he's since fixed the game, so now it looks like that. Um, the field of view, I think, is still potentially a little bit too low. This game has all the makings of being, we made this for console, but you know what? We're going to port it to PC with the minimum amount of work. And it's running Frostbite 3, I'm sure it'll all be fine. That's the attitude I think they've taken. Because there's a few other things that are just absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, um, the fix that Hayden has at the minute also allows you to then adjust the field of view beyond uh, to I think it's plus or minus 6 or plus or minus 20. Uh, but unfortunately that currently doesn't apply to the in-car view. Um, which is, or the nose view I should say. So I just need to pop back into my hideout, if I can find... No. I can find the point where it will let me in. That's the one. Because I've got the wrong pursuit tech. But yeah, the game is vertical minus by default, which it really shouldn't be. Certainly, as I said, all indications are that this engine is horizontal plus by default, so they, they must have coded it badly. And there's even more signs that it has been coded badly. But first thing, while I'm in here, you may notice this. Keyboard configuration and gamepad configuration. Gamepad actually doesn't let you configure it, it just tells you how it's bound. Now, from what I've seen, the only gamepad that works is the 360 gamepad, and it supports no other peripherals. That means racing wheels do not work, period. I try plugging mine in and it basically thinks that the left and right are the rotate camera. And then I think one of the buttons is accelerate rather than the um, pedals. It just flat out doesn't work. And because you can't rebind it, you can't fix it. Um, so yeah, they've done... Basically, you can have keyboard control or you can use the gamepad. That's it. And that's where they've left it. And the other major issue is actually a frame rate issue. Um, I'll get the game loading back in, shouldn't take long. Um, basically, you may notice that on the upper left hand corner, I've enabled my um, frames per second display. There's a very specific reason for that. Uh, those of you not paying a massive amount of attention to uh, things going on, on around this game, the game is hard locked to 30 frames per second. Um, you can override that lock with a console command, but if you do so, um, the game actually doubles its processing speed. Um, so basically, if I just drive around for a few seconds...
Now, if I hadn't applied a second fix, then I would be driving, accelerating and turning twice as fast as I would be now. So it just makes the game go nuts. Basically, they've locked the process or they've locked how the game processes to the speed at which the game is rendering, which is something I've not seen in a game for over a decade. It's an absolute noob mistake to do something like this. I mean, I toy around with programming, and I have toyed around with programming games, and even I know that you lock the processing based on seconds. So you then, the best way to do it is you basically take a, what's known as a delta time, which is the time between the last frame processed and this frame processed. Uh, let me just add something so I can drive in the right direction. I'm heading there. You take the time between the last frame processed and the time between this frame process, that's called the delta time, and then you multiply that by the time you expect to move per second. And that basically means that no matter how fast the game is um, displaying, you will always have a smooth mo motion being um, generated in the game. So you can keep a consistent speed regardless of how much the frame rate is fluctu fluctuating. But they've just not done that. So in order to actually get this working at 60 frames per second, you have to use two separate commands. Um, and once you've done that, you're then faced with another problem. My game's now dropped to 50 frames per second. So it's actually now running about one sixth slower than it should be. And that's pretty much the downside. If you use this fix, you have to be able to keep it running at 60 frames per second constantly. Otherwise, you just everything will slow down. So because I don't have a smooth 60 frames per second, I need to drop my graphic settings from ultra to high. That is the wrong set of settings. So that down, that down, that down, and I don't think that's gonna do that. Good, that's instant applied. Although that's made no difference to frame rate, so it's actually not the, I should have just looked at my um, little window beneath me. Uh, yeah, I'm, that's actually lagging out on something else. Let me have a look at my processor usage a second. I apologize. Because my GPUs are running around um, 80%. So it's actually not rendering slow. Come on, get out the way. And in fact, looking at my CPU cores, I'm not running out of CPU room. So there is actually something else slowing this game down that isn't graphics related or CPU related, which makes no sense, but never mind, we'll continue anyway. So yeah, you can fix the um, frames per second, but you need to guarantee that you can get a relatively consistent 60 or at least very close to 60. Otherwise, yeah, you're just gonna see the game slow down. Quite literally, everything will slow down. Um, I'll be putting uh, in the description of this video relations to all of these fixes and how to get them to work. Um, there's one other thing I will put in there. Um, NVIDIA doesn't currently have an SLI profile for this, but I've used a tool called NVIDIA Inspector to override the profile for this game to run the SLI settings for Battlefield. And that appears to have given me SLI performance, which is the only reason I can now process it on Ultra. But yeah, I suppose now that I've got through all of that, I should really get into the game. Um, I've dropped the music volume primarily because it uses l some licensed music and they're likely to copyright claim me. So I've dropped it. So hopefully it's not too loud that they will flag it up. But anyway, so yeah, as I said, it's a Hot Pursuit game. So, well, it's closest to Hot Pursuit. Um, it is basically open world. So all of this here, you can just drive around to it to your cart's content. Now, if you can see on the right hand side, I've got current objectives. If I want to level up, I need to complete these objectives. So I need to do one hot pursuit and one interceptor. And I'm currently sitting on top of an interceptor mission. So we're going to do that now. So the idea of interceptor missions are fairly simple. I just have to outrun the cops. So yeah, this is a Need for Speed game, so... Ah. Okay. 
Yeah, this is a Need for Speed game, so it's um, very much more arcadey than realistic. So the idea is you'll be drifting around corners rather than breaking for them. You can still be trying to get a decent line through them, but... But yeah, as it's a hot pursuit game, or best described as a hot pursuit game, you'll notice that I've got a couple of effectively extra feet things that I can do, and they're, te they're called pursuit techs. Uh, the two that I've equipped at the minute are Jammer, which I failed to use, which allows me to... Ooh. That's exactly where I wanted to be. Um, there's a couple, or the two I'm using, one is Jammer, which allows me to jam any incoming... Um, or jam anyone else from using hops or um, bleh, words allows me to jam anyone else from using pursuit tech um, this also will disrupt any lock on attempts so I could have used it to prevent the cops from firing an EMP at me and the other one I got is turbo which is basically just really fast boost now there is an online mode but I'm not entirely happy with it um, the problem with the online mode is effectively, well, the game automatically puts you in an online mode. It basically puts you in a world with at least five other players. And you can either work with those players or work against those players or just drive around on your own. And that's kind of the problem. Because it's just an open world and everyone's doing different things, it kind of defeats the point of it being online because unless you're playing with friends and specifically trying to organize yourself together yeah unless you're actually trying to work together then you're just driving off and doing your own thing and then occasionally you're pass another player but Something made me go flying. Occasionally you'll pass another player, but that's pretty much as far as it will go because you won't necessarily interact with them and you just keep going about doing your business. There doesn't appear to be any way to... Um, or Basically, that's the only online mode. Didn't I miss him? I guess I didn't. There doesn't appear to be any other online modes other than that effectively six people in an open world. You can't select, like, pick, I want to do a race with six other players. It's just, you can't do it. The option isn't there. I'm playing in a single player world, is this still linked to the internet? Right, now I need to lose the cops and enter my hideout. So let's... GPS, nearest hideout, it's actually behind me. Have I lost the cops yet? That was stupid. <laughs> Apparently not. Ooh, that's not good. Oh crap. <laughs> and I've just lost all my speed points. I don't think I had that many. Um, speed points work similar in the previous game or previous games. Basically you accumulate them for, uh, depending on whether you're a player or a cop, you'll accumulate them for just racing, completing events, driving dangerously, causing damage, etc. If you're a cop, you mostly get them for um, so things like drifting, going fast um, and busting of erasers or busting racers but yeah as I was saying about the online mode um, 
my primary issue with it is the fact that it's the only thing that exists. Um, and it's just not good at encouraging players to group together to do specifically the same races. Um, there is an encouragement there, but I spent uh, about two hours yesterday when I initially started playing this. And even though I went after other players to try and do the same thing as them, um, they just kept driving around doing whatever they wanted to. And similarly, the cops didn't specifically try to hunt me down. And despite the fact I literally tried to hunt them down to get them to hunt me down, they just wasn't bothered. So I think the game needs the same sort of modes that it had in um, Hot Pursuit, where you can specifically say, right, I just want to have a race with other players, or I want to have a Hot Pursuit with other players. And then it just picks a course and you can go. Um, the way that Most Wanted did it was actually quite interesting, but again... That can't really be done in this because most wanted you were always the player and then the game randomly selected right go to this race and do this race next and it told you what to do next but because you have cops and robbers or not robbers cops and racers um that dynamic doesn't really work so they basically just say go loose do what you like and it just doesn't work great as a um online mode so anything else i think that specifically covers my complaints about the game um i wish my frame rate was being a little bit more consistent because i tested it yesterday and it was fine but never mind so as you can see because i got busted i lost all my speed points speed points are used on the racer side to buy cars and upgrade cars and there's a specific reason why i wanted those speed points is because i wish this wouldn't flash so much it makes me blink every single time is because I get a, ja uh, a Lamborghini now. Jaguar. <laughs> and I wanted my Lamborghini. I like my Lamborghinis. So yeah, I wanted the extra speed points because I wanted to buy this and upgrade this. So we will buy the Lamborghini New enemy requires a sharper blade. and then start upgrading it. So basically, as you're progressing, you get three choices uh, as to how you want to progress. So you can either progress using race, pursuit, or um, drive as your three character or ca categories as the um, uh, racer. So race basically typically relies around so like completing races, time trials. Um, that says perform two perfect per um, turbos, so going fast and that sort of thing. Pursuit is basically just like the cops did. Um, Pursuit is basically more focused on taking on the cops, and Drive is more focused on just dicking around. Um, which is pretty much the one that I've been doing for the most part. Uh, as I've been going along, these have been getting harder and harder. Um, but if we go for career overview, you can see the first one I did was race, and then I've just done Drive pretty much all the way down. But each time you complete one, you'll unlock a new car, and there are different... Um, goals to do for each individual one so it's designed to allow you to pick how you want to play the game a little bit more rather than telling you you need to do this and you need to do that so again it's providing you more freedom than any of the other games did so i have a lamborghini in here somewhere that i can buy there she be so let's purchase us a lamborghini there we go beautiful looking car so, Pursuit Techs. Um, as previously stated, these are basically um, activatable functions that you can add to your car that do different things. Uh, electrostatic Field is designed to stun, shunt and damage um, cars that you hit, but it also protects you against EMP locks and stun mines. EMP is a targeted weapon and basically shuts the car down temporarily. Jammer is what I was using the other one, it's what I'll be using here as well. Um, it prevents cars around you from using their pursuit tech and prevents cars from locking onto you with their pursuit techs. Uh, Shockwave is basically a forward firing cannon. Uh, it fires a blast of air, well it says a sonic blast, but it's basically a blast of air forward, which pushes any car and damages them nearby. I think that's what I got hit by when I went flying. However, it could be that the physics went wonky because my frame rate wasn't at 60 frames per second. 
Uh, stun mine is basically exactly what it sounds. It's a mine that will stun the car behind you, and then turbo gives you a massive boost of speed. So let's buy that and upgrade it twice. Then you've got car personalization. This is exactly what it sounds like. You can pick between your colors, or if you want, you can make your own colors. So let's go, where's me metallic? I wanted a darkish blue with a lighter glazing. That actually doesn't look like too bad, but I think that's a wee bit too purple. That's better. Apply the paint, then you can change your rim colours. You can't actually change your rims yourself. You can apply stripes if you really, really want to. Go faster stripes, but I don't like them. You've also got decals, and the only one I've been using is the only one that I like, although I didn't actually look further past it. Yeah, they're not that great. So yeah, the only one I've been using is the number 11, which I'm absolutely thrilled that they have it. I like my number 11, it's my favourite number. Somewhere around about there. Uh, you also have um, these wraps, which are basically uh, full skins, I really think. Yeah, they're, they're basically skins for your car. But they will override all your other paints and things. So we won't be using one. You can then also change the license plate between a very fixed set. And you can change what's written on your license plate. So there we go. My car is ready. Now I need to performance upgrade it. So the two things that I like to upgrade the most are control, acceleration. But because the rest of these are cheap, we'll get one in each of them. And then we'll upgrade that a couple more times and upgrade that a couple more times. Upgrade the top speed a bit. Uh, I'm not intending on ramming, shunting and that. I'm intending on getting away so we won't worry about those. So more acceleration. Yep, more acceleration. More control. More acceleration, more control. More acceleration. And I can't boost my top speed anymore. So there we go. So I've now upgraded my car. Now, I'll get to the um, cop side in a second. Cops can't upgrade their cars, but they basically get more cars as a um, byproduct of that, or as, as their way of doing things. So their cars are specifically tuned. There's basically three types of each individual car. And you can just pick between which one you want to um, race in. So let's see something... Let's try and do a time trial. I think I can jump straight to it. But yeah, from the racer side of things, I've pretty much covered everything. Ah, there is one thing I didn't cover. Um, you may have noticed there's a few other things that I really should point out. So, first things first, if you have a look at my rear view mirror, you'll see that there's a little flame with a one next to it. That's my heat level. Um, the basic idea of that is, is the more I drive and the better I'm doing, the higher the my heat level is. But the higher my heat level is, the more the cops will try to shut me down. And if you're actually playing a cop and you're playing a multiplayer, uh, you get more points for taking down somebody with a higher heat level. So that's basically the flip side. The longer you stay out, the higher you get your heat level. The higher your multiplier goes, the more um, speed points you get, but the harder the cops will try to shut you down and stop you from racing. And of course, if a cop busts you, you lose all of your speed points. Uh, you bank your speed points by um, making your way back to a hideout, and you can do that even while being chased. So if you can get yourself back to a hideout and get inside before the cops get to you, you get your speed points. Oh jeez, thank you cop. That's a great way to start it. And I'm running at 40, 50 frames per second, this is not good. 
That's a lot. <laughs> That's really not good of them the wrong way. I'm not sure how bad the catch-up is in this game yet. It's from what I've seen, it could be potentially really bad catch-up. Because I've crashed out and then found cars going really, really slow. Whoa! Fuck it. And found cars going really, really slow right in front of me. I'm now heading the wrong way. Hazard of trying to talk while driving. Come on, Turbo. I've got a long way to cover in a short amount of time, I ain't gonna make that. Even if I absolutely nail it, there's very little chance I'm gonna make that. Ah, damn it, I've not made my gold. Not even sure I should have made silver for that, but never mind. So right, I've earned a very small amount of speed points, so I'm just going to quickly open Easy Drive, enter the GPS and tell me where the hideout, and hideout is, and I'm going to blaze past this cop. And make my way back to the hideout so I can bank my points. So uh, while you're just free driving around, you'll notice I passed somebody that had a flame above their car. Uh, he's another racer, and you can challenge them to head-to-heads, um, which basically generates a random course and you just race on it against the person that you just challenged or who just challenged you and you accepted the challenge. So that's another way of getting a few speed points. So that's the racer side of things. Now we'll swap over and I'll give you a quick look at the cop side of things. So as you can see, the customization is missing as is the um, performance um, upgrades. So the way that this works is that each particular car has three different variants. So these are all the Mercedes-Benz. You have your Pursuit class, an Enforcer class, and then an Undercover class. Now, the Pursuit class is specifically designed to catch up with cars. The Enforcer class is built more heavily and is designed to take cars out. And I'm not quite sure what the Undercover class is supposed to be. I think it's supposed to just be um, and I see, according to that, it has better control. 
So it, it might be so like a little bit more of a racer, which is maybe why I like it. But yeah, I'm currently driving an Aston Martin. I've not actually unlocked that many cars yet. Uh, what car will I be unlocking if I complete my current speed or my current assignment? The law to them with an BMW M6. So I must bust three racers. There is an easy way of doing that. Now, Pursuit Tech for the cops is largely the same. However, um, there are some differences. So I think the cops get slightly better Pursuit Tech. For example, they get spike strips. But for the most part, the Pursuit Tech is the only stuff that you can actually buy for the cop or for the cop side from, with your speed points. Cars are given to you free as you um, progress. And then again, you also have customizable license plates, but that's as far as it extends. So we'll exit the garage, and because I know my current objective is to bust free racers, I will find a hot pursuit that I haven't done yet. That one there. And this will give me the chance to do that. So basically, the idea, the whole idea of the cops is to bust racers. That's it. Um, the idea is to ram them off the road, cause enough damage so that um, effectively you can um, stop them and then you bust them. Um, as you progress, you'll be able to get more and more advanced pursuit techs. So I've seen cops use spike trips, roadblocks. Uh, they've spawned a helicopter after me before, um, which also drops the spike strip. So yeah, basically they have all the techs to try and... Yeah, I'm sure that field of view is lower than it should be. Um, yeah, so they have mostly technologies designed to stop racers rather than um, to outrun. Now, racers get their nitrous from driving dangerously. Cops basically get it over a period of time, I presume, depending on how far away they are. Missed. I presume from how far away they are from the people they're trying to chase. Uh, that's how it used to work. Damn you! You mind me! <laughs> I double crashed. Thank you, game. There's a bunch of bugs and things like that. I've fallen through the world once. Which isn't exactly something that... Now you see, he was going way slower than he should have been. So yeah, I think heavy catch-up is definitely in effect here. Out the way. Yeah, these weather effects are really slowing the game down, so you, you might be able to tell the game looks like it's running slower, and that's quite literally because it is. And again, this isn't actually GPU related. I'm still only using 80%. Where's me last racer? That's not him. There he is. Oh, he's almost dead. All I need to do is give him a gentle nudge. Miss me. There we go, so that's my free races bus. So now again, this time in order to bank my speed points, I need to get to the nearest command post, which is right there. 
Now at any point if I wanted to, if I was nearby a racer, I can start on a pursuit just by pressing, I think it's um, page up. So at any point I can quite literally just happily start tracking down suspects remaining, but I've already captured them all. Yeah, I completed the event, which was what I was trying to do. So, yeah, at any point you can actually turn on your sirens and tr or, or chase down a racer so like, that has a um, flame above their heads or above their car. And again, the same thing applies. Um, there's one. The higher the... Uh, the higher the number next to the flame, um, the more points you'll get, speed points you'll get for um, successfully busting them. But I think that pretty much covers it. Um, let's think. I apologise, there's going to be some blinding flashing lights again if you're watching this on full screen. Now, I, I'm not prone, um, well, I, I don't get epilepsy fixed, but this flash in here hurts my eyes. That effect there, I, I mean, quite literally, it hurts my eyes watching that. I have no idea why they've done that. So yeah, new car. And specifically, this will be the undercover version of this car. Oh, cut screens, which again will be centred to my centre monitor. The story is pretty much just fluff. It's basically just there to give you co some vague context to your progression. Uh, there's really no point to it. But yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. There are some other race types. I mean, for example, um, the cop has rapid responses, um, which are basically just time trials. Um, there are also, uh, where is it, home end? Speed cameras, so if you go through those you'll get snapped by a speed camera and the faster you go, basically these are speed walls. Uh, the whole thing, or the whole game's in, interlo interwoven with, um, what's it called, autolog. Um, much like all of the other um, Need for Speed games. I don't think it's a requirement, but since the game has to be run through Origin, it's probable that it just automatically sets it up and links it up nowadays. I was going 211 there. Yeah, I think some of these excessively high ones are ones where I've been using turbo at the time. But yeah, so you also have, so like, these are spot speed cameras. These are um, average speed cameras. And then these are jumps. So yeah. I'll have one last look, but I think I've covered everything. Uh, all drive. Yeah, I think that's basically what all drive. I think is basically the system there, or the name they've given the entire system of being able to play on a public match and a friends game and a private game and just have um, X other people in your world. Now the problem is that the game is still hosted by a player. Um, when I originally started this game, I had or. Uh, because it's public game by default and you can't change that until you're in the game. Um, I launched into a game with um, five other people and in the first 30 seconds of me logging in, the host migrated. About two minutes after that, the host migrated again and it was basically the game was down for a minute or two while everybody resynced and reloaded. 
and then the host migrated for a third time and it migrated to me and then I was playing for two hours so I'm sure everyone else in my room was quite happy by the fact I wasn't just buggering off and forcing them to wait but yeah um, while, while I was in um, the multiplayer match there was very little interaction between players um, other than so like occasionally one copper might turn around as you pass in to try and chase you down but if you're just going way too fast they'll just leave you alone and then bug off doing something else um, so yeah not the best uh, key configuration I had to change this just because they had it weirdly set up for me um, basically throttle up and brake was W and S left and right was still left and right E brake was bound to control and nitrous was bound to space and that made no sense to me because I've never had a racing game where the default brake or the default handbrake wasn't anything but space and shift makes more sense for nitrous just because it's more comfortable to have your finger over shift rather uh, if you're using WAS and D. Uh, I have WAS and D just for looking left right and behind me and then my pursuit texts are Q and E which are defaults as well. And then you've got things like skip tracks which is for music, uh, play auto log recommends so that will I presume automatically start uh, the thing it recommends the most and then easy drive is that little menu that you can bring up while you're driving which is useful if you want to so like path your way to somewhere but you don't want to press escape because pressing escape brings up this map but if you're currently loaded in game it immediately takes control away from what you're doing you just roll forward and slow down at however fast you was going and I've had this take 10 seconds to load so traveling 150 miles an hour with no control for 10 seconds tends to lead you into a brick wall or another car so it's unadvisable to try and bring up the map while driving at high speed but yeah other than that you've got basic game settings so brightness uh, safe frame setup all oh, right yeah that's that thing here basically is where the hood renders uh strange because that's bleeding over that part hmm. after looking I've never actually tr uh, played with that uh, then you got subtitles overwatch I'm not sure what this is oh yeah overwatch is a external mini game where people can dick around with what you're doing I'm not entirely sure of it but it sounds like a very bad idea to me I've left it on just because I have no friends, <laughs> so no one's going to be messing around with me. Then you've got PC settings with your gra graphic settings. Motion blur is of course off because who would want it on? Uh, lighting quality is as high as it will go. Shadows is on. I've turned off ambulance occlusion. It doesn't make a massive amount of difference, but it does impact frame rates. And then render qualities are all high. Standard audio settings, so yeah, my music is low. These are off by default. So if you want to use voice chat, you have to turn these on manually. And this is specifically selecting the device to use. So that's very useful. And the fact that it's off by default is also very nice. So you don't have to listen to some whiny six year old. OK, I'm exaggerating. And I forget what textures are. Game manual, yeah. So let's have a quick look at safe frame setup since I've actually entirely forgot to test it because everything was fine previously. So we'll jump in and we'll see how, what this does. I suspect it's just going to move my UI further out. I just not noticed that it was quite as close to the center as it was. Yeah, that's all it's done. It's moved it out a bit. So if we go into here, and nudge it in a bit, put it somewhere about there. Yeah, that looks about good for me. So yeah, you can modify your hood using that, but by default it's relatively well centered anyway. But yeah, do I say that a lot? But yeah, anyway, um, I think that pretty much covers it. I can't think of anything else to go through. So 
that just leads me to basically come to a conclusion. Now, I'm in two minds. Because of how bad this game is port-wise, the fact that it looks like it's just a lazy console port, I'm tempted not to recommend it on that basis. But the problem is that the game is competent. It's fun enough. Um, I'm having a reasonable amount of fun playing it, even though I'm playing it on the keyboard, and the keyboard controls are absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, I'm in two minds. Basically, if you want to support a developer that doesn't really support PC, but for a game that's fun to play and has the fixes available for it, then you should get the game. If you like Need for Speed games, or the most recent Need for Speed games, then you will probably enjoy this game. So you can always get it for that. But yeah, I'm not sure whether or not I can recommend this game. So on that, I will leave it. Uh, just needs me to say thank you very much for watching, and hopefully you will watch me next time, so I will see you next time.